Bobby's on the left. <laughs> Brown's on the right. <laughs> Tight like hallways, smoked out always. Every day. The story how we met is, um, gotta take it back to the early 90s. Me and my partner rhymed for Rico Wade to the a Tribe Called Quest What's the Scenario remix that took us back to the house where we met Sleepy and everybody else and we was just dungeon rats. Yeah, basically we start out at the dungeon uh, in the basement um, and I think me and Big really vibed out. We already were like, you know, super cool. He's already my little brother and everything. But I think the night that we really vibed out is when me and him went in the studio by ourselves and we, um, he came up with the hook with Claiming True. And uh, I think that was the night that we truly bonded as musicians and kind of figured out, okay, kind of like brothers, both of us from Savannah, yeah. you know? Uh, so we kind of like they, uh, age different twin, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, so, you know, I think that was the night that we really started, you know, bonding together as, as, uh, as uh, musicians and brothers and everything. Yeah. Aquarius brothers. Aquarius brothers, yes. Yeah. We yeah. just like to have fun and, and create that newness that the people want. You know what I'm saying? We never yeah. try to revisit nothing we've done. Um, you can go over songs like Can't Wait from the Barbershop soundtrack. You know, yeah. we've been jamming for a long time. Bowtie oh, from Speakerbox, yeah. Love Below. Um, just having fun, man. I think we're kind of the same in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Music-wise, it's like we have that ear that just kind of likes everything, you know what I mean? Our playlists are weird. Because we, as far as being Aquarius and everything, we, we listen to everything. So I think we're very, we're already open-minded to each other. So, and we understand each other. So I think that's what makes it work. And then know? there's a, a, a pure sense of brotherhood, you know what I'm saying? Like, and honesty, you know what I mean? Like we don't, you know, stroke each other's ego or nothing like that. If you like, if Brown like it, and I don't like it, I say I don't like it. If, if I like it, he don't like it, he'll be like, I'm gonna pass on that one, you know what I mean? You just yeah. gotta keep it honest, yep. and then just, just kind of let it organically come together, and I think that's what makes it work. I mean, basically, it's yeah. keep with the, with the, how, how, the, how the young niggas say, keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, definitely take breaks, because we you know, he has the things that he has to do, and I, you know, I have my life, but when it comes to music, we always come back together, you know? Yeah. If he needs me, I gotta do it, say, Brown, I'm at yeah. the studio, so, yeah. so I'll be the... It's all scheduling, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, having a studio, Stankoni, where you can go and record anytime you want to, 24 hours a day, 365, is, is very convenient to the process of us making music. So if we got any kind of idea, be like, hey, Brian, I'm going in Tuesday at 3 o'clock. He might show up at 3.15, you know what I'm saying, with a bag of Uber Eats. He go ahead and knock his little food down, and he be in the ready to, mm, me, 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 me. We just get yeah, out of my process. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, gotta feed the bell. That's right. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the process could be anything. It could start with Brown might have a melody, or we might have a concept for a certain song, I might have a lyric, and yeah. we, we build from that, you know what I'm saying? And then we'll kind of, some days, most of the time, it's not, a one day thing, like we don't microwave the music. It's, it's in right. the oven or in the crock pot. So we might lay it down in pieces and might jump that to another true. song mm -hmm. and then come back because anytime you got fresh ears on something, you get a new perspective of where you want to go with it. Let them juices get in that meat. Yeah, yeah. They ain't sit there for gotta, miles. Boy, gotta let that meat eat, <laughs> that meats, the meats, man. <laughs> We've been on the road performing together for years now and the whole idea came when we were in Texas one day. It was like, man, we need to, you know, do a whole project, you know, full of just, Big One Sleepy Brown Records, a big sleepover. Right. Gonna be the name of the group. And it was just a natural progression to what we've been doing for the past almost 30 years. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I mean, all the songs that we've done together, as far as like Outkast, uh, So Fresh, So Clean, yeah. To The Way You Move. Right. We always had that, that sound together. That, West that, Savannah. Yeah, that, yeah, that stuck out. You know what I mean? And uh, I think that was, it was kind of, uh, I wanna say kind of easy. Cause we already know our vibes and everything, so it was, was kind of easy to do and fun to do. Right. Actually, we we finished the album before you know all the madness and mayhem and chaos ensued. You know, so you know during the whole process of being quarantined and all that, we just kind of was just kind of tweaking um, things. But we uh, actually put out the first two records, uh, doing it and returning to the Dope Boy, like the night after we performed at the Super Bowl with Maroon Five. And so since then it's just been a process, you know, right before everything hit, we put out Can't Sleep, Lowercase, and then The Big Sleep is Over, the title track from the album. Well, the first one was Intention. Oh, Intention. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Intention. Yeah. Yeah. Feature Yeah. We're going to put out a, a few we'll songs. Put out, <laughs> put out some records, yeah. yeah. You know, music uh, has always been therapy for me, too. So on the lockdown, you know what I mean? Just, I just work. 
and came up with stuff, and actually stuff that was on uh, Goody Mob's album that came out and stuff like that. So it was good for me, you know, it, it put me on lockdown. I was bored, had nothing to do, so I couldn't do nothing but music. <laughs> so, I mean, I. I was basically just, you know, started learning how to cook more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I started cooking, um, uh, doing a lot of working out. Like, I lost, like, 31 pounds, uh, you know, my skin glowing. Uh, <laughs> I, I did grow out this, grow this Burt Reynolds mustache. I wanted, like, a black Viking. And so I'm a Blyking right now, big Blyking. And I just, you know, just trying to, you know, you got to go in there in that cocoon, and you come oh, out and you God. emerge <laughs> something new. <laughs> A black, 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 a I'll probably fuck a deli. And then if yeah. you get to the newer artists, you might get some of that uh, little Baby. That's A-Town, you know what I'm saying? Um, definitely Future, he's Dungeon Family, you know what I mean? Killer Mike, Janelle Monet. My thing is, like, if you can make it, what, 10 years, okay. 20 years, kind of solidified. Yeah. Like, right now, we, I look at it as, like, we got reserved seating, you know what I mean? Because as the music is recreational, and, and, I mean, people can tell, like, we having fun making music. It's not like, we gotta do it or nothing like that, but the thrill comes in finding that new sound. So if to all the new artists that's coming up, man, just I can tell you, just evolve every time, evolve and, and become something different. By staying grounded too. Right. You just gotta be careful what you're putting into your ears.